Hello, welcome to Quackalo. Thank you for being here. Today we're going to be talking about Ryo Zen from Tabula Games, coming, of course, to a crowdfunding platform near you. The link, as always, in the top of the video description. Now, we have a gameplay, a three player gameplay with Board Game Co. coming out in correspondence with this video, so keep your eyes and ears attentive because this is a really interesting approach to the worker placement genre of games. It has a little bit of area control a decent amount of player escalation and worker buffeting, meaning you're going to be upgrading, getting more powerful, more abilities for your workers as the game continues, and you have the core elements of a Euro-style game, which is going to be resource management and end-game victory point scoring, which in this game will be built around set collection. The end object of the game is to uh, have any number of various different sets of random shards and gems, of resources, and sets that match different scoring cards that you'll be able to collect down here in this title pool corner. Now, you'll notice the game is built around this core shrine with different worker placement regions all around the outside, and instead of meeples to be used as our worker placement, we're gonna be using cardboard chits. I don't know if these will be upgraded or changed in the final game. I would expect not because these give you the opportunity to do two very interesting things. First off, when you go up to the barracks here, you'll be able to utilize your apprentices and train them into more advanced soldiers, giving you the chance to snipe someone from across the board, shift people out of a zone, have more or less defense, or take an action multiple times. Every single one of these upgrades is interesting, unique, and adds something to the team that you're working with. So you're upgrading your workers as your building and playing throughout the course of the game. I think that's an interesting twist in, of, in and of itself, but you also have the opportunity to spend extra resources to play your workers down backwards, renixing on their actual abilities, cloaking them in disguise, but giving you the chance to buff it and power up your apprentices to hold down zones, because there is a bit of area control in this game. You see, every single zone and region is going to have a day and night phase where you start by placing, taking actions throughout the course of the day, and then in the evening time, you'll collect the resources and corresponding victory points based on who has control of each space, along with a tiebreaker module that's gonna work down here in this area. So, how does the game actually play? Well, on your turn, you're going to go around in turn order, playing down your different workers. These could be upgraded workers from the barracks, this could be your fighter that's going to knock a worker out of a zone and into the main chapel, the main citadel here, or this could be your apprentices, played down as a cloaked item, a cloaked creature, or played down just as themselves, which is free and doesn't cost you anything because resource management in this game is tight and coins can be hard to get your hands on as Alex learned in our gameplay. This top space here is going to have the event deck and the event draw location. These will be negative consequences that will hit different players at different times for different reasons. For instance, people who have the most workers at the Citadel or consequences for having one person all alone or controlling a region. You may want to nick some of these. That's why there's going to be worker placement zones here. If you go there, you'll gain a uh, blue shard and you'll be able to discard one of these cards, but you're also limiting other players from having control over that marketplace. You see, you can't re-go to a location where someone else is, and some of the zones are a little bit harder to place at, making you pay or cost resources if it's really worth it for you to go there. In this location, you're going to be able to get rid of those event cards and also score four victory points and grab an orange shard at the night round if you control it. Down here, you're gonna be squabbling for the first player marker. When you come to this location, you're gonna take that, shifting yourself up this hierarchy and changing the tiebreaker status. Along with that, you're going to be able to get a orange shard and two victory points during the evening phase. Down here, you're going to be building the progression track, kind of the marketplace of the game, taking your tile, moving your marker forward, and then paying whatever the corresponding cost is to place the resources down. Tied with that is gonna be the location over here to the left. This is gonna allow you to take the abilities or the advantage that you have on whatever location you're currently on, meaning you're gonna be able to collect more resources, generate benefits, and just use your worker uh, over here on this market. Moving up into this zone, we're going to have in-game effects and abilities and also end-game scoring. These are gonna be essential to your strategy and you'll start designing how you actually wanna play the game and what type of resources you're going for. 
You'll keep an eye out over here, and like you can see in the two-player setup here, it's fairly limited, but you'll keep an eye out for something nice to pop up that you would like to get your hands on. You'll go there and you'll grab it. And then the barracks we've already been through. When you go up to this location, you'll flip a tile. Uh, Prentice should not be in there. You'll flip a tile, uh, generating another worker who has another special ability. You'll pay the corresponding cost if you need to, taking or claiming that ability, swapping them out with one of your apprentices, and having a new character to continue playing down. The game will progress like that for a series of rounds until you finally get to end game scoring, where you're gonna score based off of having full sets of uh, three of the green, orange, and purple, having complete collections of the green, orange, and purple, and then having unique resources throughout the course of the game. Uh, this is, like I said, a really interesting take on worker placement. I do find it a little simple, and I would like to see more modules and expansions. I'm excited to see what the Kickstarter unlocks as we kind of delve into it. But just off the bat, I like the nature of upgrading your workers, getting new abilities, and being able to kind of pick and choose what tactics you want to take, and, and being able to respond to people who are being jerks on the table. I also appreciate all the different zones that you can go to, and the fact that it's a limited action pool, Every zone is restricted to a certain number of workers, but you have abilities like the fighter or the archer who can knock people out of certain zones, giving you territory control. I find that the last few plays of the game, or every round, really come down to a tight back and forth, trying to position yourself to get the shards that you want, score as many victory points as you can, and also hold on to and harbor whatever sacred resources you have. Now, this middle zone here is not to be ignored. You'll score victory points for having people knocked into it, giving you a little bit of a buff or debuff, and sometimes strategically, you actually want to be attacked because there's times where you need to be in that zone. Along with that, you could always just choose to put your own worker in there, which will be able to take a corresponding action, either tied to where the wheel is currently located or just generating your resources, and then the wheel will give itself a nice big spin. I like this because it means that not every zone is always limited. You can usually get access to a zone within one or two turns of taking an action here in the main citadel area. So if something's really important to you, you might be able to figure out your way to it. I also really like the action deck or the event deck. It gives you a little bit of control over the chaos that's gonna happen and you kind of make a judgment call. Is that worth me spending a whole action to discard and save myself and everyone else from the points or is it not gonna hurt me as much as it's gonna hurt the other player and do I trust them to get rid of it on their own? You'll find some equally hurt everyone and you'll find some pop out that you'd really like to have them go. I mean, there was times where I played into this zone specifically to try to prevent someone else, usually Alex, from going there to discard a card that would hurt them more than me, which I think is a fun twist on sort of that event deck. The, the randomness in the draw is mitigated by your control over the entire board. Overall, this is a approachable, accessible, unique take on worker placement, area control, and resource management. Like I said, I do think it is a bit lighter than I would regularly get to the table. I enjoyed it a lot at three, and I dive back in, hurriedly. But I wanna see more expansions and modules, and I'm excited for the uh, Kickstarter to unlock some of those along the board. And I'm excited to see what the Kickstarter unlocks along the way. I mean, the game gives me this feeling of a core system, like a structure that we're playing in, that can just be expanded in half a dozen different directions. But Right now, it is certainly compelling, certainly worth you swinging over and taking a closer look, and I appreciate you letting me take the time to tell you about it. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thank you.